Hello, my name is Jeremy Cretion, and welcome to this episode of Critiques. Today, we're going to be breaking down and ranking the 2021 additions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, plus Venom, Let There Be Carnage. I'm a huge fan of the first Venom movie, but for me, Venom, Let There Be Carnage didn't land the punch. There was a lot going on for just a 90 minute movie, and I actually wish it was longer. The saving grace for this movie is actually the post credit scene where Eddie and Venom somehow transport over to the main MCU, which qualifies this movie to be on the list. But rest assured, dear viewers, we here in the Daily Bugle will not rest until we've uncovered the web of lies. In the mid-credit scene in Spider-Man No Way Home, Eddie gets transported back to his own universe, but a piece of Venom is left behind. What will this mean for the future of Venom in the MCU? Black Widow was another letdown for me, mainly because the team over at comicbook.com overhyped the movie, with one of the writers claiming it was the best MCU solo movie. I love the Red Guardian in this movie, and recent reports claim he's getting his own Disney Plus show. What If was a very uneven show, with several very good episodes and a few I didn't like. Is the Doctor Strange in this series the one that we see in the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness teaser? The Falcon and the Winter Soldier was very different than the first MCU Disney Plus show, as it was grounded in the real world. I love seeing Sam and Bucky continue their bromance, and Sam picking up the shield and becoming Captain America. And that monologue at the end? You've got to do better, Senator. You've got to step up. Because if you don't, the next Carly will. And you don't want to see 2.0. There are lots of reports that after COVID, this show had to go through a lot of rewrites as it was rumored to be dealing with a global pandemic. In the first few episodes, there was talk of a vaccine for something, but we never found out what for. Marvel Studios has denied these reports. The Eternals was such a beautiful movie, but once again, there was too much packed into this two and a half hour movie. The Eternals could have benefited from being a six episode Disney Plus show with so many new characters. Kingo was probably my favorite character, along with his assistant who stole every scene they were in. Cut! Okay, everyone, that was good. I think we can do 10% better. That was beautiful, very, very good. Ah! <laughs> my friends from college are here. Oh, sure. oh boss! Perfect timing. Welcome to the set of Shandar Dastane Icarus. I'm playing you. I can't wait to see where this team and the Black Knight pop up next. Hawkeye just ended a few weeks ago, and I absolutely loved it. Seeing Clint reluctantly help kick Bishop was a blast. And seeing the same kingpin from the Netflix show Daredevil was truly amazing. I went in with no expectations for Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, and it was the most fun I've had at the movies this year. Katie was a blast, and seeing the return of Trevor Slattery. I served time in federal prison, which turned out to be the best thing for me. I got clean. I rediscovered my passion. Then my dad broke you out. Exactly. To kill you. Exactly. Brought the crowd to cheers. And who doesn't like seeing Wong sing karaoke? WandaVision was the show that kept us guessing the whole time and looking for hints and Easter eggs that didn't exist. I was a fan of Wanda and Vision before this show, but now I'm all in. I've never experienced loss because I've never had a loved one to lose. But what is grief? if not love, persevering. The finale was a bit of a letdown for me, which is why it didn't land higher on this list. I had been wanting a Loki solo movie since The Avengers came out, and we finally got it with this Disney Plus show. Like WandaVision, kept us guessing what was going to happen next, but it stuck the landing at the end and didn't disappoint. Loki sets up so much for the future of the MCU and the multiverse. And finally, Spider-Man No Way Home. I was lucky enough to see this on the opening Thursday night, and I loved it. Seeing Charlie Cox return as Matt Murdock in the opening few minutes, all the villains from the previous Spider-Man movies, 
And of course, seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield return to reprise their Spider-Mans was fantastic. Can you imagine the crowd's reaction if Marvel and Sony had been able to keep the secret of Tobey and Andrew's return? Green Goblin stole every scene he was in, and it was nice to see Doc Ock redeem himself. I am interested to see what they do with Spider-Man going forward as they basically rebooted the character again at the end of this movie. Will Tom Holland renew his contract to return as Spider-Man? How do you think the 2021 additions to the MCU stack up? Be sure to like, comment on, and share this video, and follow us on social media. Till next time, stay creative.